Legion, Season 1, Episode 6, Thoughts. This episode is called Chapter 6, another episode I love. Spoilers for everything X-Men leading up to and including this episode. This is a TVMA show, and as such, I will... Yeah, this video will also be TVMA. Let's dive right in. Yeah, I uh, really love Lenny as, as a therapist. Early in the episode... There is actually a certain level of like professionalism, but gradually just, you know, the, the, yeah, she becomes the Lenny we know and love. Just the, the slowly, it's like, it's like picking at a piece of string or something. Slowly she just unravels 100% and we end up with the Lenniest Lenny we've Lennied so far. And... Let's see. Yeah. Um, obviously, in this setting, Melanie froze. You know, there's the thing about you were the one who froze. You're the you know because you didn't change anything in in all these years. And then I will say, you know, there we do have some of old language. Anyway, Come on, you've been in the chair. You know how this goes. You know, just yeah. And, yeah, Tonami, you know, explaining about his, his childhood, seeing his, his mother die, and, you know, the radio was on, she was singing along, 99, Jack and her kisses. And then we have the, you know, he says, I, I'm like, a, I, in my mind, I'm a time traveler. Just can't keep going back and back and back, but I can only watch, which... I I could see how that could be how this whole thing started like in reality such as it is you know in Legion's reality the show Legion's reality Tonami did witness this and he was unable to do anything about it and so he basically devoted his his life to trying to help people you know yeah deal with memory deal with experiences and let's see. We have the yeah. Um, the carries louder milk. Yeah, you know they're they're just they have attachment issues. They're they're too overly attached with each other, and yeah, just. Really, really charming the the two of them sitting there. It's because like you can you can see the original character in there, but this is you know a somewhat different version, which you know that that really goes for everyone in this episode. And the eye was apparently. You know, they talk about that he was the last to develop. And he says to Lenny, do, I look, do you think I'm any less of a man now? And that's, of course, that's where, you know, part of the reason why he chose evil, because he's not the only superpowered person on this show. You know, he's... I guess so far he's the only one we've met that chose evil I mean yellow eye demon obviously also but I feel like there's something else going on there that I I mean is is yellow eye demon quite human I guess we're we're yet to to learn for sure you know and in this one when yeah as Lenny describes it it's not so much you know she she specifically says I'm a walking talking fungus you know, but but yeah, maybe those would be the the two, and maybe we'll find out what Yellow Eye Demon's, you know, inciting incident was. But yeah, when he was younger, the eye was, you know, felt insecure about his masculinity, and now he hurts people because he can, and all that pent up frustration from back then hasn't gone anywhere. And Sid, Sydney is the first person to say that it's like there's something wrong here. You know, she says it's like a dream. 
but a boring dream. And for a second, I was like, is she trying to, like, bait Yellow Eye Demon? Is she trying to get Lenny to be like, I'm doing the best I can, okay? I, did, I only have so much to work with here. You guys are incredibly boring. You know, but no, apparently she does. She is just saying, you know, it's, there's a dreamlike quality to it. But, yeah, and, and that is, yeah, again, she's, she's very quick to pick up these things. Again, I think it's because she swapped bodies and brains sort of with David. So she can, she can pick up on this stuff. And, you know, Yellow Eye Demon is having more trouble subduing Sid than David because... Yellow Eye Demon has been connected to to David, you know, specifically say, you know, since like the womb. And then there's the Sid, you know, is is looking at the door, and then there's. You know, she gets warning number one. Which, I mean, I guess it's because she, maybe they think she's late. She should have been there earlier to get the medication. And Amy shows up as a nurse, as Ratched, and says spot check. Which, googling, okay, so it's a sample or investigate quickly or at random a quick random examination, a check made without prior warning. Yeah, I mean, I guess the idea is they, they think she might be trying to smuggle something or just, yeah. And, you know, it's not just, you know, in, in addition to, you know, she says the thing about, you know, I don't like being touched. But, like, it's overtly, it's not just, you know, let's, let's check. Like, she specifically... Like, she kind of slaps, you know, Amy kind of slaps Sid's butt cheeks after she's done the check. And it, I don't know, I, even just the, the check itself really looks to me like it goes beyond, it's, it's not just, you know, oh, is she trying to hide something on her person? It looks like, you know, it's basically a form of harassment, you know, basically to keep her away from from the door and the yeah David is witness to the the conversation the monologue about why is the spit like that but now it's Tonomi in place of Lenny I gotta say Jeremy Harris who plays Tonomi Wallace it's a really great job like there's there's definitely some Lenny ener energy Lenergy going there and yeah, and they talk, you know, what about before? What about before? There is no before. And, and you know, they talk, you know, Tony me basically express, and I think, again, very much channeling Lenny here, you know, this is what Yellow Eye Demon wants David to think. There is no getting out of here ever. And that is, you know, that is something that some mental health patients, you know, yeah, and you know it's a it's an anxiety that they that some of them experience. Some of them are are happy there, and yeah, I appreciate that the moment that Sid and David are in the same place, she starts talking about the door, the bedroom door, and yeah, um, you know, there's the thing about you know David's doing well things are things are working you know Lenny the yellow eyed demon has made sure that you know to yeah to try to get him to be comfortable with the way things are so you know as the the fungus needing to get him to do what yeah and See, then we have the. Oh, right. No pie for you. You can have mine. No. Wow. 
I mean, sibling rivalry, huh? And, yeah. You know, Sid saw bugs in her pie, and understandably the other patients also freak out. But then we see the pie again, and there doesn't appear to be any bugs in there. So, you know, I guess... Yeah, it's you know there's there's bugs in the pie, same as there were like bugs in the strawberries in in the white room in you know chapter five. So that is basically the the uh, what's the word the I'm I'm guessing that's like a, a byproduct that yellow eye demon can't completely get rid of cuz certainly would make sense to, the same as the door itself you know and then lenny dances and it's just it's fantastic that's that's going to live rent free in my brain for decades that's that's an amazing sequence just holy crap um yeah and and you know like grinding and 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 there's these clips from the the yeah the experience some some of the experiences David has had yeah really extremely nicely done and yeah at the end yellow eyed demon leaves through the the door and. I yeah I quite appreciate the um did you have the dream again you know and and there's the thing about you know carry with a C is like oh I dreamt about a giant ice cube I I just really need a, a glass of lemonade you know you know and yeah after you know obviously in reality it's it's Oliver reaching out and I I quite appreciated Carrie with a C explaining the you know the door using these sci-fi concepts you know the the you know what was it alternate dimension kind of thing and you know cuz yeah it's at the end of the day that is still carry with a sea louder milk in there this is that's how he thinks it's very cute when when carry with a sea makes carry with a k smile at the i don't actually know what to call it i'm just clown gag thing that he pulls you know with does that make it sound like he was choking out a clown that sounds like a euphemism, especially on this show. Um, what I mean is, he's he's like acting like he's pulling a handkerchief, and it's just it's it keeps going and going, and it's many different colors. Just yeah, really really cute little moment. Always nice when someone can, because like that you know it. I've never dealt with one of those things, but I'm guessing it takes a while to to stuff all that, to, or or maybe you get them pre-stuffed. That also sounds dirty, but but yeah, you know, doing that just to just to make someone you care about smile—that's nice. Really, really glad. Um, I don't know if they needed to say it, but I'm I'm kind of I'm just just a tiny bit relieved that they did clarify. No, they do not go to the bathroom together. That's the you know bath bathroom bedroom. Those. Are are separate, not just from each other, but other than that, they're they're usually together. But yeah, that was. I don't think m mentally I had quite. If if it hadn't been the episode, I think I might have been thinking, wait, does that mean? So I appreciate that being cleared up. And yeah, the eye is like you know, off in the corner, but he's, like, staring at her, and, you know, she 
yeah, she thinks that's him, so she grabs and, like, starts to twist the arm, as Carrie with a K would do in the real world. But it ends up being Carrie with a C who was there. Affirmative. And... Yeah, Carrie with a C is visited by Oliver in the diver suit setting up the yeah gradually they are being awakened yeah I guess by the by the end of this episode let's see Carrie with a K is still completely unaware and I suppose David it was mostly because he was annoying Lenny which I can I can respect like got to be difficult work to be a supervillain. If people keep annoying you, maybe you eventually get badgered into revealing your evil scheme. But yeah, by the end of the episode, pretty much everyone, and, and I guess Amy. Other than that, everyone seems to have woken up. Just Oh, and Tony, I guess. But those, those might be. And... Yeah, we learned that their diagnosis has been changed around, probably, to to make it easier. Y yeah, um, Yellow Eye Demon is aware. Okay, so it's going to be a problem. So, let's make it that her diagnosis is psychosis. That way, you know, if someone says, if, if you know, if, yeah, if she realizes and she starts telling people, they're going to think, oh, she's seeing things again poor thing and I cannot put into words how much I love the the wall thing that she goes up and she like touches it and starts bleeding just holy crap like it's not the first time that the show has channeled Silent Hill I hope it won't be the last I I loved every single time like that just Oh my god. It looked like it was practical effect, but I mean it's it must have been CG. I it pretty much cuz like that would have taken forever to to build. It would also take a long time to to animate obviously, but yeah. <laughs> and Lenny comes by and has got the the ah, head headphones, that's what they're called. I I got like this close to calling them analog earbuds. Yeah, now I feel old. But the yeah, you know that that's another thing. I I can't. I don't know how I keep not mentioning it because that lives rent free in my brain. But in episode one, the group therapy, like you know, most of the characters there, like yeah. You know, a, one character is talking, and the other, you know, not everybody necessarily seems like they're one hundred percent present. But Lenny is like not only clearly not listening, like like headphones all the way down, but she's like, mm, yeah, mm. it's just holy crap, just just a percentage of of respect. This is. This is a group therapy session. You can listen to music in your room by yourself. You can listen to music probably a lot of the time, you know, but no, she's, wow, that was, and, and eventually also, I want to say that was Dr. Kissinger is like, okay, can you, can you just take, take those off, please? But yeah, more of the, the snark that I love so much about the show in that scene. And, and yeah, you know, the the that's yeah yellow eye demon uses that to to take Sid out of the equation very very creepy and ominous as she floats to bed you know it's it's essentially like a hypnotic thing. she's hypnotizing Sid with the the noise of of crickets and that is a th like you know, hypnosis in real life, I'm not, like, an expert or anything, but what I've read about it, basically, yeah, you need a 
repeated, you know, some some sometimes it's like the visual of the what what are they called again? The the thing that's uh, yeah. Um I've acted it out now, so maybe you know what I mean. Uh, you know, but it can also be an an audio cue. And Carrie with a K wakes up and finds herself alone. Really great little thing about, you know, they, they get into bed and, you know, Carrie with a K seems to be the one who is especially, you know, at, at least, yeah, yeah, in this episode, she seems like she's the one who needs it more than Carrie with a C, you know. Knocks the, is, is that shaving a haircut? It sounded like it, but maybe it's, yeah. And and you know the other one, Carrie with a C finishes that, and and here you know she she does the thing, no answer. He's not in the bed, and then like, I don't even, know. I'm legit not sure what the eye is even trying to accomplish here. I guess he is just like, a, a bored cat playing with, like. I don't know if there's a better metaphor, but it's kind of like he's a he's a cat who's had like the the um, that's animal cruelty though. But yeah, I, I don't know of a better or maybe like a a snake as you know that's been you know mouth prevented from opening and still toying with potential prey even though it literally can't you know and and he's like you know oh the First he's he's and like he's a narrator on a nature documentary, and then he's like, "What big eyes you have!" You know, he's he's like quoting Little Red Riding Hood or something, and you know she says, "Careful, I bite," and then he says, "So do I." Wow, and then he goes on to say, "Have you ever eaten a living animal?" There's a smell to it, like, oh my god. And, yeah, David goes to the door, and Amy shows up, and yet again, just, like, so unbelievably abusive. You know, she says, do you know you're unwanted? No one wants you here. They pretend they're your friends, but they really, you know, it's all any of us can do to not puke when you're around. You know, you're so disgusting, all this stuff. And, you know, that is... For, if, if you have a mental illness and you, you maybe feel that, it's it, then it might be a very intense feeling. I think it's probably a pretty universal, I think everybody has it. At like you know, for for many, it's like at a at a just tiny little bit, you know, of um, you know, percent of a percent, and and it's again this thing of you know controlling David for Yellow Eyed Demon, and yeah, Melanie goes through the the thing because of Oliver and sees real life and you know tries to tries to mess with the bullet tries to push the people out of the path of the bullet and then the eyes open and I'm almost certain those are Aubrey Plaza's eyes you know so really nicely done putting them in the just, yeah and let's see then we have yeah uh, Lenny yeah, David goes to to talk to to Lenny, and you know, there's. <laughs> I'm starting to think she might not be the girl for you. What do you mean? We love each other. Love, you know. And and she goes off on this thing about the the fungus, and then says, "When I hear the word love, that's what I think about the fungus." And David's like. You know, a, a simple no, I haven't seen her would have sufficed. I love the snark of the show so much. And, and yeah, you know, Yellow Eyed Demon 
expresses like irritation at just like people in general like the this thing of you know there's that thing what's the point of life you know and then says walter gets you know the eye gets it power is the point of life and you know talks about challenging god and all this stuff just yeah really yeah that's I, I really appreciate getting such a such a clear like really just, there's no there's no question there's no this is this is how the yellow eyed devil thinks and what motivates it and then Lenny is basically like seducing David like she. She puts her foot at his, like, crotch, and he's got, like, a reaction to that, and then she's, like, she's, like, essentially straddling him, just, like, yeah. And, and I mean, that is, to, to the yellow-eyed demon, this is probably, like, sex. This is, you know, the, the yeah, earlier in the episode, we saw the, the dancing and in the episode before this one, using David's powers against the division people, you know, really playful. Like, this is fun for the yellow-eyed demon. And, yeah, and, and even, you know, yellow-eyed demon even says, you know, I we've known each other um, since the womb. I'm your walking, talking fungus. And, yeah, um, she does manage to subdue David. And then we see Carrie with a C in the suit come to help Sid. And, yeah, really, really excited to see. So there's two episodes left of this season. And, yeah, um... This is this is really building up extremely nicely to yeah this has been a very well paced season and yeah um, IMDb trivia for this episode the scene when David is lying in Sid's bed mirrors the scene in episode one when Sid is lying in his bed and yeah according to the original Clockwork Uniform system. The Summerland Crew's dangerous slash color code institution is designated as follows. Melanie and Tonomi are red, high risk of violence. Carrie and David are yellow, mild to moderate risk of violence. Sid and Carrie are white, no risk of violence. That's Carrie with a C, yellow, Carrie with a K, white. Lenny, let's see. <laughs> Lenny tells David and wants to be a god, makes fun of David's father by saying he was acting so holy, giving up his only son, which is, of course, what God does in the New Testament. And... Let's see. Huh. Okay, so... A goof. Miscellaneous. When Sid enters the common area of the mental hospital, she focuses on the Carries playing ta table tennis for a moment. A closer look reveals that the actors are only pantomiming and don't actually have a ball. Table tennis sound effects were added in post-production to cover up the goof, and a few minutes later, the two are shown again playing with a real ball. Huh. Was that for, like, production? I mean... At least one point, there's like a, a really long take. Certainly, if if either of them miss with the ball during the long take, you gotta go all the way back so that I could understand if the if that was the the choice. Let's see and yeah. Um, Next episode, I will do tomorrow. And. Yeah. Uh, right, real quick. I quite appreciate David talking about, you know, the. How mania 
can be dangerous. You know, um, people always talk about the depression side, but it's the other side, that invulnerable feeling. It's dangerous.